Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about on the hematology blueprint for the NCT pianary uh, blueprint is coagulation disorders. And the first topic under coagulation disorders is clotting factor disorders. Three of the most common coagulation disorders are factor eight deficiency, which is hemophilia A, factor nine deficiency, which is hemophilia B, and von Willem brand disease. Uh, and these are all X-linked disorders. The remaining coagulation disorders are autosome or recessive disorders. The most common symptoms of ex excessive bleeding after procedures, such as dental extractions, and circumcision, and mucosal bleeding, such as epistaxis or uh, menorrhagia. The performance of PT and PTT is usually sufficient enough to diagnose uh, these clotting disorders. A prolonged PTT and a normal PTT uh, is indicative of factor uh, 11 deficiency. Uh, prolonged PTT and prolonged PT is typical of factor 7 deficiency. Uh, prolonged addition uh, of both PTT and PT suggests either deficiency of factor 10, 5, prothrombin, or fibrinogen are due to combination of these deficiencies. Prothrombin deficiency is most commonly uh, uh, presents as excessive bleeding after invasive procedures such as umbilical cord uh, procedures, joint muscles, or mucosal bleeding. Available of treatments uh, is um, prothrombic complex concentrate, which is PCC, and fresh frozen plasma. Factor 5 deficiency is associated with minor bleeding to severe bleeding episodes. No specific concentrates available treatment for severe uh, bleeding is uh, fresh frozen plasma. And you'll see that there's a common theme with most of these clotting disorders. Uh, uh, the, the plasma is where all these uh, factors are made, and uh, giving people fresh frozen plasma uh, helps correct uh, deficiencies of these factors. Treatment for combination of factor 5 and factor 8 deficiency is FFP. There's no specific concentrate. For factor 7 deficiency, it is hard to, uh, to, uh, to use uh, FFP without causing volume overload. Factor 7 has a short half-life, and factor 7 is ideal uh, um, but uh, um, if available, but it's not available in the U.S. Recombinant factor 7A is available and approved in Europe for patients with factor 7 deficiency. Recombinant human factor uh, 13 is A is approved for treatment factor and a uh, factor of 13 in deficiency in the U.S. Factor 10 deficiency is treated the same way as prothrombin deficiency. Daily infusions of PCC or FFP is needed. PCC is a treatment for factor 9 deficiency, but also contains large amounts of factor 2, 7, and 10. It can be treated uh, and it can be used for treatment of those deficiencies. Fresh frozen plasma is the mainstay of treatment of clotting disorders because it contains the coagulation uh, factors. Factor 13 deficiency requires prophylaxis from uh, the time of diagnosis. The bleeding episodes are severe. FFP can be given with concentrate. Uh, factor, I'm sorry, the vitamin K factors 2, 7, 9, and 10 deficiencies are treated par partially by the administration of vitamin K, oral or parental, and the severity of bleeding episode depends on which route uh, you give. The next thing I want to talk about is the hypercoagulable states. Uh, the, the, the causes of thrombosis are divided into two, two groups, inherited and acquired. Virchow's triad is a theory of the pathogenesis of thromboembolism, which there's three uh, um, parts of the theory, which include alterations of blood flow, stasis, vascular endothelial injury, and alterations of constituent, constituent blood, uh, uh, which uh, could be inherited or acquired hypercoagulable states. Common inherited hypercoagulable states include factor V Leiden, Prothrombin gene mutation, protein S deficiency, protein C deficiency, antithrombin 3 deficiency, and dysfibrogenemia. Acquired risk factors include more than 48 hours of immobility in the last month, hospitalization in the last three months, surgery in the last three months, trauma, IV drug use, pregnancy, oral contraceptives, and tamoxifen, glucocorticoids, smoking, and oral contraceptive, and malignancy. Some patients with antithrombin deficiency are resistant to heparin, and antithrombin uh, concentrate has been used safely in, those, in that population of patients. Protein C deficiency has been associated with warfarin-induced skin necrosis, but is low and is recommended if no, uh, if you, to be used if there's no 
First degree relatives have a history of warfarin induced skin necrosis. Target treatment with, is with warfarin uh, with a target INR between two and three for three to six months for initial DVT. A recurrence of DVT requires lifelong treatments with warfarin. Pregnancy requires Lovenox uh, because warfarin uh, crosses the placental barrier. Heparin is also safe. The next thing I want to talk about is thrombocytopenia. Thrombocytopenia is defined as a uh, platelet count uh, uh, below the lower limit of 150,000. In general, surgical bleeding is a concern. You have a platelet count less than 50,000. Severe spontaneous bleeding is a concern when the platelet count is less than 10,000. Rarely patients with thrombocytopenia are at risk for uh, thrombosis rather than bleeding. Heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, um, there are antibodies to platelet factor 4 that causes the thrombocytopenia. Uh, platelet activation leading to life-threatening arterial venous thrombosis. Another thing I want to talk about is antiphospholipid syndrome. It's seen in patients with SLE, uh, systemic, systemic lupus erythematous. Medications, uh, infection, and cancer. Patients with arterial and venous thrombosis requires uh, anticoagulation and treatment of the underlying condition. Disseminated intravascular coagulation, or DIC, are at risk for thrombosis and bleeding, usually venous. DIC patients are usually acutely ill with sepsis and malignancy. We tend on treating the thrombosis rather than the bleeding in most situations. The next thing I want to talk about is thrombotic. Thrombocytopenia purpura, hemolytic uremic syndrome, is associated with small vessel platelet-rich thrombi. This can occur in any organ and can be life-threatening. Treatment is plasma exchange and should be initiated promptly. Uh, patients with nocturnal uh, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria is a rare condition caused by a loss of glycosyl uh, phosphodinazole from the cell membranes and can cause thrombosis. Uh, of the intra-abdominal veins and cerebral veins with hemolytic anemia and the other cytopenias. The major cause of patho pathophysiologic mechanism of thrombocytopenia are bone marrow problems, platelet destruction or consumption, or redistribu redistribution or splenomegaly. Other causes of thrombocytopenia include pregnancy, liver disease, hypersplenism, immune thrombocytopenia, congenital platelet disorders, Infections, medications, alcohol, malignancy, and nutrient deficiencies. The next thing I want to talk about is idiopathic thrombocytopenia purpura or ITP. There are two main there are two main criteria needed to diagnose ITP. The rest of the CBC, including the peripheral blood smear, is normal other than the thrombocytopenia and clinically apparent associated conditions such as SLE, INF hospital lipid antibody, and chronic lymphocytic leukemia is not present. The pathogenesis of ITP is related to a combination of increased platelet destruction and inhibition of megakaryocyte platelet production via specific IgG antibodies by patients, B cells often directed against platelet membrane glycoproteins. Splenomegaly is present because of sequestration. Patients' um, clinical manifestations include petechiae, Purpura, easy bruising, epistaxis, gingival bleeding, menorrhagia, GI bleeding, gross hematuria, intracranial hemorrhage are, are rare. Children with ITP uh, present after infection usually. Drugs have been shown to induce ITP include alazinamidab and, and purine analogs. Initial treatments include glucocorticoids and IVIG. Splenectomy is the, the definitive treatment for ITP. The next thing I want to talk about in the last part of the section is thrombotic, thrombocytopenia purpura, or TTP. Both uh, TTP and hemolytic uremic syndrome are both syndrome, acute syndromes with abnormalities of multiple organ syndromes, uh, evidence uh, of microangenetic uh, hemolytic anemia. In thrombocytopenia, TTP and HUS are often discussed in separate syndromes. Um, the presenting features are, are almost the same as both uh, in adults. In a few patients, neurological abnormalities are dominant, and acute renal failure is minimal or, or not present. With acute renal failure, is, when when acute renal failure is dominant, 
the, uh, the disorder is usually considered HUS. Clinical manifestations include a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, often with purpura, not seen, not usually seen uh, severe bleeding. Renal function may be normal, but renal insufficiency may be present, associated with anuria. Neurologic abnormalities, usually fluctuating, are common. Fever is rare. The diagnosis of TTP and hemolytic uremic syndrome is uh, made clinically and only requires thrombocytopenia and microangiopathic hemolytic hemolytic anemia without another clinical apparent etiology. The diagnosis of TTP should be should um, prompt initiation of plasma exchange therapy, which is life-saving 